So, who's going to win? That's the bigger question, right? One day before the election, let's give you all the numbers. National popular vote. President Obama with the lead, 47.9 to 46.8. Now, this is Huffington Post. It's not their opinion on the numbers. What their pollster does is it combines all the different national polls, okay? So now, this is the popular vote. It doesn't really matter. This is not how elections are decided in America. But it is interesting that President Obama has stopped Mitt Romney's momentum nationwide and has regained uh, the momentum on his own. He used to be trailing in that, okay? Until very recently. So right now, he's got a little bit of a, a lead in the popular vote. Now, of course, much more importantly is the swing states. Most important one is Ohio. So how's he doing there? If you combine all the polls, as Huffington Post does, 49.1 to 45.7. So that is a significant lead, well over three points for President Obama. Now, we say significant, I don't mean 12, right? Uh, but it is outside the margin of error, and as tight as these elections are, that is a pretty solid lead. In other words, if I was on Mitt Romney's side, I'd be in mid-panic. And in fact, I've seen these elections, and we've seen them over and over again. This is not just one poll. If it was one poll, you say, ah, we can overcome. A combination of all those polls, that means your goose, your goose is cooked. And right now, I'd be thinking about alternative career paths. So, now, that's Ohio for you. Iowa, very important swing state as well. How's he doing over there? 48.6 to 45.9 for President Obama. All right. So, how's he doing in what I say is the most important set of swing states? Owen. That's Ohio, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Nevada. Now, we told you two of those. Let me show you a combination that real clear politics has done. There's a different website that combines the polls. There we have Obama up by five in Ohio, Wisconsin he's up by three, Iowa he's up by five, even better than the Huffington Post combination polls we just showed you. Nevada he's up by four, if he wins all four of those states, plus the solidly blue states he will have 277 electoral votes and win his second term. In fact, he doesn't need Iowa and Nevada, he only needs one of those states and he would be at 271 at that point and still get reelected. Now, let's go to the third uh, set of people that combine the polls and the different factors. That's Nate Silver at the New York Times. Well, does he have a different analysis than the two we just quoted you? Nope. In fact, his is even stronger. Expected electoral votes for President Obama, 307.2 to Romney's 230.8. Of course, they don't get decimal points. That is the average. If President Obama is near 307, he blew him out. Okay. Now, chance of winning for President Obama, day before the election. 86.3 percent. This is why the conservatives get so mad at Nate Silver. They're like, how could you do this kind of math? How could you say that 2 plus 2 equals 4? But the reality is this is not his opinion. It is a combination of the polls and the different factors that he has combined to come up with that number. And obviously his whole career rides on it. So if he's wrong, he will be embarrassed. It will cost him perhaps jobs, money, etc., etc. He's not doing this for any bias or anything like that, he's doing it because he hopes that it's he's done the right analysis. And by the way, the last time around, he got 49 out of the 50 states correct. That's why he's now with the New York Times. Now, uh, when it goes to the popular vote, he thinks President Obama is even going to win that, according to again the numbers and the polling uh, as far as we can see before the day before the election. Uh, President Obama 50.6 to 48.5, almost a two-point lead there. I'm a little surprised by that because that's a little larger than every other poll that I have seen on that issue. Now, how about a fourth set of numbers here? We've shown you those three. Now, in trade, in trade is where they bet on uh, the outcome of the election. And since there's money on the line, and markets are pretty good at predicting which way things are going to go. In fact, this has been fairly accurate, not, that's, I'm underselling it, it's been stunningly accurate in other elections. Doesn't mean they get every state right, uh, of course not, but they have been very, very good in the last three elections, and right now uh, the betters have President Obama at 67.3 percent and Romney at 32.8 percent. So when you combine all of those numbers, it seems obvious that President Obama is significantly favored to win this election. In fact, when you look at all those numbers, it would be shocking if he didn't win this election.